Section 10 for example three. So let's define the binomial theorem and get to some examples. So in general, we can find a times plus b to the n power um, given by a series. So my series goes from the zero term up to the nth term. We're gonna introduce this new thing called n choose k. That's how I read that, we'll talk about that in a second. Um, this is finding the coefficient for each term. So these are my coefficients. It tells me how many ways we can get each term. And then we'll have a to a power and b to a power. And just like we discussed, um, a is going to start at the n power and we'll subtract k's. So the a powers are decreasing. just like we observed, and the b powers are increasing because they start at zero and go up. And that's our formula. So let's talk about what I mean by how many ways. So if we look at the previous example, um, for a times b, right, there were two ways to get a times b. Um, if we look at the cubed one, right, there were three ways to get a squared times b. So a squared times b, two of them are right here, and then the third one. So if you fully expanded it, there were three ways to get it, and so on. So that's what I mean by number of ways. So let's figure out how to calculate this n choose thing. So it's given by those factorials that we talked about, and if you don't remember, I'll show you in the example. So 5 choose 3 will be 5 factorial on top, so n factorial goes on top, which is 5, and then k factorial, which is 3, and then n minus k, which would be 5 minus 3 in this example, factorial. So we get 5 factorial, 3 factorial, 2 factorial. And then we can multiply these out to simplify. So we get 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. That's a factorial. For 3, we get 3 times 2 times 1. And then for 2, we get 2 times 1. It's a lot, but stuff will usually cancel out. So it looks like 2 times 1 cancels out. The 3 goes away. And then 4 over 2 gives me 2 over 1. And I'm left with 10. So there would be 10 ways for this one to happen. This would happen for when n equals 5. So this would be a fifth degree, and it would be the third term. But we'll talk about that in a second. Let's try 10, choose 1. So 10 factorial on top, and then we get 1 factorial, 10 minus 1, which is 9. So 10 factorial over 1 factorial and 9. So let's write those all out. It's going to look long, but a lot of stuff will cancel out. So 10 all the way down to 1, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. That's the definition of a factorial. 1 is just 1, and then 9 is 9 down to 1. So it looks like a lot, but you might notice that everything cancels out past 9. And so we actually just get 10. All right, let's try 8. Choose 8. So this would be one where we're looking at an 8th power. So it'll be 8 factorial over 8 factorial times 8 minus 8, because n and k are both 8. So it'll be 8 factorial over 8 times 0 factorial. And then a new definition, 0 factorial is just equal to 1. So it doesn't mean 0, it means there's basically 0 factors, so 1 is the only factor left over. So 0 factorial is equal to 1. And so we just get 8 factorial over 8 factorial, which is 1. So this coefficient would be a 1. And so this formula is not too bad, um, but when we're going to be expanding, we're going to have lots of terms, right? We're going to have up to n terms, which could be a lot. So this formula gets annoying. So Pascal's triangle is a really cool shortcut. Um, so you're welcome to use this formula, but again, you're going to have to do it n times. So if I'm expanding to 10, you have to do this 10 times. Um, so let's do it, look at Pascal's triangle. Um, the binomial coefficients, um, having a formula is nice, but messy. So 
what I'm gonna do is show you this cool triangle, which is a cool shortcut. So we're gonna start with a one, and we're basically just gonna make a triangle. So we're gonna have one, 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 we make a triangle. And then we just keep going. So the only way to go on the outside is once, and then on the inside you add. So one plus one is two. So just try a couple more and we'll see. Okay, so then on the outside, the only way to go is one and one. It's kind of the only option. And then we add on the inside. So one plus two is three. Two plus one is three. And these numbers might look familiar. So let's go back to the first page again. So notice my coefficients for the squared one was one, two, and one. My coefficients for the cubed one was one, three, three, and one. Is that what we got in the triangle? Yep, so these are my coefficients. So this is, the first row would be actually be a plus b to the one, because it would just be a plus b. And the top row is actually considered the zero power, because nothing, nothing would be left over. So the coefficients don't really start till the first row. Um, the way I had to figure out the power is the diagonal, and you'll see as we go down. So let's do a couple more. So again, we only have ones on the outside and we just add. One plus three is four, three plus three is six, three plus one is four. We'll do a couple more rows. Um, right? We can't put them all down, but if you needed to keep going, hopefully you see the pattern so you could. So the next row is one, one plus four is five, four plus six is 10, six plus four is 10, and four plus one is five again. So this is for my fourth power and now my fifth power. Um, one more. Um, so then one plus five is six, five plus 10 is 15, 10 plus 10 is 20, 10 plus 15 is, 10 plus five is 15, and then five plus one is six. And so this would be my row for my sixth power, right? And it keeps going and going and going. So you could just keep continuing this pattern to find more. Should we try one more? So the next row, I'm gonna do it quickly, see if you're catching on, would be seven, 21, 35, 35, 21, seven. And so that would be for the seventh power. And just keep going if you need more powers. So it's pretty cool. So now we don't have to do that formula over and over and over. Um, and so I have another version just slightly labeled. So zeroth row represents my zero power. Um, basically, if I want to figure out the power, I look at the first diagonal. And then these are my coefficients of the term. So it starts with zero and then first, second, third. And the way this works is this one right here, three choose zero would be one. Three choose three, or sorry, three choose one would be three, uh, three. Three choose two would also be three, and then three choose three would be one. So it's solving the coefficients for us. And I actually end up stop using the formula because the triangle can do it for me. So let's use Pascal's triangle to find five choose three. So that means I go to the fifth row. We have to remember zero is really the first one and we go to the second, the third one in, but again, we start at zero. So zero, one, two, three, four, five. So five choose three would be 10. And we actually already found this. So I chose one that we already solved so that we could check that out. So I'm actually gonna give up on this whole five choose thing and I'm gonna just expand um, without really using the formula. So the formula is a plus b to the n equals the sum of n choose k, a to the n minus k, b to the k, and then we start at zero and go up to n. So I think the n choose formula is scary, so I use Pascal's triangle instead. So we can write it out on the first one, and then after that I'm never gonna write it out. 
So just so we can see the formula once, and then we'll use Pascal's triangle. So the way the formula works is on this one, we start at zero and go up to six, because there's six of them. So it'll be six choose zero. It'll be a to the, and then n minus zero. So, so six minus zero, or six. And then b to the zero, because k is zero. And then I'll just write them vertically, just to see them all once. Then the next one would be six choose one, a to the five, because it'll be n minus one, b to the one. Six choose two, a to the four, b squared. So you'll notice the a's are going down by one and the b's are going up by one. So we don't really need the formula we can do it without. Six choose three, a goes down to three, b goes up to three. Six choose four, a goes up down to two, b goes up to four. Six choose five, a goes down to one, b goes up to five. And then six choose six, a is zero and b is six. And then I don't want to do that formula six times. So instead, I will use Pascal's triangle. So let's go ahead and make the triangle. So one, 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 and then one, two, one. So eventually, if you learn the triangle well enough, you can kind of just write it out really fast. So maybe pause the video and see if you remember the pattern. So remember, I'm just adding the middle two terms. And I'm going to go until I hit six. So 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1, 1, 6, 15, 20, 15, 6, 1. So I find that we want this row for the sixth power. Or, right, you have it above. But it is nice for you to just remember how you can write it out really fast. And those are our coefficients. And then we don't have to use that annoying formula. So that finds all of these. So we will get, so six choose zero will be one. So we'll have one, a to the sixth. We'll have six, a to the fifth, b. And then we'll have 15, a to the fourth, b squared. We'll have 20, a cubed, b cubed. 15, a squared, b to the fourth. So essentially it's saying there's 15 different ways to get a squared and b to the fourth. That's what this is telling me. Um, and then there'll be six ways to get a and b to the fifth. And then there's only one way to get b to the sixth power. Cool. And we'll just add them up. And that is our expansion without actually multiplying it out. So I think this is a really cool shortcut. Um, multiplying out six times is super tedious. And I think Pascal's triangle makes this even easier because we don't have to deal with that ugly formula. So I'm just writing all of these out into a single expression. And there we go. We expanded without actually multiplying. So let me know what you think. Let me know if you have questions. In the next video, we'll expand ones where they're a little bit more complicated than A and B.